Okay, the next way we're going to prepare the rainbow trout, it was with some uh, fanned out rosemary potatoes as a base on my thing, a spinach florentine as a bed, and we're going to fry up that rainbow trout to a nice golden brown so that, uh, that we get a nice visual plate effect, good flavor, and good nutrition as well. So first of all, we want to take a nice uh, red skin potato. It doesn't have to be a red skin. It could be any, uh, any particular potato. And we want to go ahead and cut it nice and thin. We're going to omit, omit the last uh, nubby, and we'll cut it nice and thin. If you have a slicer at home, you can do that. Most folks do not. There we have it. I've sliced up my potato, looks very nice, and I have some nice vegetable oil here. Before I put my vegetable oil in the skillet, and if you'll notice, I'm using a non-sit stick skillet. You usually want to use that type of thing when you're making this kind of preparation because the potato is starchy and can stick to the bottom of the skillet. Now I want to heat that oil up. While I'm heating the oil up, I'm going to go ahead and make the arrangement with my potato and how I want it to look when I put it on the plate. I'm going to try and make it go all the way around in almost a semicircle fashion. All right, as we mentioned before, it's going to be seasoned with rosemary. And we're going to take our rosemary, we'll pull it off the stem, rosemary being one of those herbs that's very powerful in flavor. And we want to make sure that we don't get too much of it on there in which to uh, overpower the nice flavor of the trout. So I'm going to give this a quick dice. And if some of the leaves are whole, whatnot, it's not going to give me that big a deal. While I've been cutting this up, my oil has been heating right over here. And I'm bringing it right over. And we see that it's nice and hot. I can drop my rosemary right in there, and we look at the effect on the rosemary. It's nice, uh, nice frying that's ha occurring right off the bat, and that's going to give me a uh, good flavor throughout my oil. Okay, now my potatoes are in the skillet. I'm going to bring them around, and now I'm going to fry them and roast them right in the pan like so, hoping that some of them are going to stay together. So we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, and there you go. The trick to being a really good chef is dealing with adversity if things don't work out the way you want them to. Okay, my potatoes are frying, and now I'm ready to move on to my spinach florentine. So here we have an onion. We're going to need some nice diced onion for that. We go ahead and peel the outsides of the onion right off. We want to taste the spinach. We're basically just seasoning with the onion. I'm going to go with my horizontal cut, nice and thin on both sides. I'm listening to my potatoes fry in the background, and I can smell the aromatics of the rosemary as I go ahead and prepare this. I want to be advised that I don't want to burn my potato or have it look uh, blackened when it comes over. So I'm looking at this, and I'm going, well, you know, I'm not sure where I'm at. I'm seeing where I'm not doing that, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Back to the onion. Now we're ready to go ahead and give it a nice, small, fine dice. Okay, my nice, small, fine dice to the onion is ready to go. And I'm ready to go ahead and saute that with my spinach, which is right here. Okay, both these products are going to go with my trout. I'm waiting for my potato to finish up because I want to use the same pan. And I'm going to plate on a nice oval plate, which is terrific because it's the same as the shape as the trout. Now we've reached the desired brownness of our potatoes, and that's going to definitely accent the color of the plate. We're looking at it right here. Um, classically, we want to put these potatoes on a towel to great, uh, soak up the grease, but most of you folks at home are not going to worry about it. And we're going to do some different sizes here. We've got some salt and pepper on there. We've got some rosemary. It's all looking very delicious. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to use the same pan. You don't want to dirty up a whole bunch of different pans to make one thing. Ideally, is to cook everything in one pan, and that's going to save you in cleanup. So I'm going to pour off a lot of the oil, and now I'm going to add my onion right to my pan like so. A little bit of onion there, and now I'm going to scoop a little bit of butter in, and my onion and butter is going to go ahead and cook. 
we're making our florentine. I'm going to put it back over on the heat, and we're going to cook that onion until it becomes translucent. At this point in time, it's critical that you add a pinch of salt. That goes into the onion, pulls the flavor out of the onion, and ready to go. I'm also going to add some white pepper. Here we see our onions, nice, it's cooking. It's got a little bit of rosemary in there. Now we're ready to wilt our spinach for our Florentine. Got a nice plate of spinach here, and we're going to put the whole thing right into the pan. The pan is hot, and what wilts the spinach is the steam from a little bit of water. So we're going to put a little bit of water on here. We can hear it. And the spinach wilts right out. Now put it back on the heat. While that spinach is wilting, I'm going to grab my trout fillet. I've got some seasoned flour that I've prepared here. Beautiful trout, looking very nice, nice rainbow color. Look at that, okay? I've got a little bit of salt and white pepper in my trout. He's ready to go right in the skillet. What's also ready is my spinach. It's been wilted. It has this fine diced onions in it, and I'm ready to add a little bit of heavy cream. We'll let that cream cook down a little bit. We're looking at the cream start to reduce. When do you know when the cream is reduced enough? By the size of the bubbles and the texture of the bubbles when they cook. As the cream reduces in moisture content, the bubbles become larger and larger. And I'm ready to add it right to my potato. And we're going to put it right here on my potato, leaving a bed area for my trout once my trout finishes off. All right, now, as I mentioned, we want to use as little uh, amount of skillets as possible. We just have the heavy cream in there. It's reducing down slightly, and it's ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead, and now I'm going to add the rest of the cream on top of the spinach. Once the cream is done, the beauty of a nonstick skillet, it simply rinses out and cleans very quickly. Once it's rinsed out, I want to go ahead and take my towel and wipe it out, making sure there is no residue left over. Now I'm ready to cook my trout. I'm going to preheat my skillet on the heat until it gets nice and hot. And if you remember from the rosemary potatoes, I've saved some of the oil. The trout is going to saute right in the oil that we have left over from the rosemary potatoes. So we're utilizing that particular product again as well. My rosemary oil is going right in to my skillet. In order to maintain a really nice brown color, I want to add, oh, just a teaspoon or so of whole butter. We'll put the whole butter right in. The whole butter is going to give me a nice browning color, and it's always also going to let me know what the temperature of my skillet is once I'm ready to put the trout in. Once the butter is totally melted and I've got some good bubbling action in there, now I'm ready to go ahead and add my trout. Okay, we want to put skin side up, body side down. That's going to give us the best presentation when we put it in. Here we see the foaming of the, the oil and the trout. We're going to lay our trout fillet right in, and now we're going to let this guy saute right in there. Gently moving the trout around in the skillet to make sure it just doesn't stay in one place. Too much radiation right there can give you burn marks on the fish, and it won't look so great. So if you're at home and you're doing a dinner party or something like that, you want to go ahead and make sure that you've got nice warm plates and the plate is warm for the trout to come off. The fish is the last thing you want to cook. The starch is usually the first thing you want to cook. The vegetables accompany it right in the middle, and that way you can make sure everything is cooked the perfect amount. Okay, so now I'm looking at my trout. I'm looking at the edges. I can see some browning starting to occur. I see the um, oil whisking around the side of the fish. 
and I'm ready to go ahead and flip him over. Hopefully, I have that, a good color, a very nice good color. Very opaque, very good looking. Okay, so now my trout's in the skillet. He's cooking up very nicely, and he's looking very good. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to put my trout on top of my spinach with my potato, and it's going to look terrific. But I need something to accent the middle of the fish, some type of garnish, some type of garnish that's going to look really... Uh, contrast to the colors that I already have working. I've got a golden brown on my potatoes. I got a bright green spinach with my spinach. And then I've got a nice tan color for my trout. One way to garnish very simply is by using the carrot in a carrot peeler. And by doing so, we can do some carrot ribbons. These carrot curls are an excellent addition to salad, as well as different other, other applications in the culinary world. Okay, my trout is finished. I'm going to take him. I'm going to turn him. I want the, the loin side up, the belly side down, and it's going to go right on top of there. And I'm going to put my carrot right in the same skillet that I made the trout, and we see how my carrot's going to start to cook. The carrot, like the trout and the fish, cooks very rapidly. It cooks rapidly because it's very thin. All right, since it's trout, I'm going to go ahead and add some lemon. And we see that lemon juice coming right over the carrot. It's going to give me almost like a pickled carrot flavor. And it's right here on the trout. And I'm going to put it right like so to give, them, give my plate that final orange color. and sauce that's just going to make it just delightful. There you have it. Enjoy your meal and bon appetit. Now that one has more of a delicate flavor. Mm -hmm. This one should be a little bit more robust. We've got a stronger flavor with the potato, uh, definitely a stronger potato with the spinach. And uh, we'll see how it turns out. That's a nice fried too. It's not. It's not a like a crunchy fried. You know, pan fried. It's a right. nice. It's still really soft, which is nice because trout is. I mean, that's where trout shines. You know? Right. Right. You know, Zach. When we talk about family traditions, certainly uh, growing up in Wisconsin, we were a, a beer battered family, and everything got uh, dipped in the beer batter and deep fried, and had great crunchy texture on the outside and moist and and flavorful on the inside, but as we go on and have different dietary needs, I think this is a, a much better uh, presentation, it's much more healthy for you, and uh, brings out the flavor of the fish more. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page, at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.